up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel I am Gold Pony I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2022 Hyundai Kona courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York PA for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i am super excited to be in this one today there are some major changes for the 2021 kona and so there is a new trim level interior and exterior have been completely redone so a lot of changes for this one and of course to go along with that you get america's best warranty being five years sixty thousand mile bar -bar bumper 10 year 100 000 miles on the powertrain you get three years of complimentary maintenance as well meaning you don't have to pay for oil changes tire rotations things like that for the first three years of ownership that is pretty darn cool and not only that the kona has been ranked with well above average reliability according to consumer reports which is the very highest reliability rating given by consumer reports so that is super awesome as well and so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this 2022 kona from acceleration braking ride quality steering feel exhaust clip sound system all of that fun stuff so what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Kona although they are substantially different from last year but SE trim level is going to start at $22,135 SEL which is the one we have today starting at $23,935 N line new trim level for the 2022 model year starting at $26,685 and the limited starting at $29,435 no ultimate trim level this year so wouldn't have mentioned that to you guys but so anyways that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of those prices simply add fourteen hundred dollars then then when it comes to the power plant on the new Kona there are two different engine configurations available for this one first one is going to belong to the SE and SEL trim level that we have today this one is powered by a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder engine putting out 147 horsepower at 6200 rpm 132 pound feet of torque coming in at 4500 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six speed automatic giving you a zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.2 seconds for this one mpg numbers coming in at 27 the city 33 on the highway for the front wheel drive 26 in the city 30 on the highway then for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but then there of course is that other engine configuration that one is going to belong to the end line trim level and the limited that one is a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 195 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 195 pound-feet of torque at 1,500 RPM, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a seven-speed dual clutch with paddle shifter, zero to 60 time on that one, 6.6 .6 seconds. That's pretty darn quick for an SUV. And MPG numbers coming in at 28 in the city, 32 highway for the front wheel drive, 27 city, 32 once again on the highway for the all-wheel drive. So might as well just go with the all-wheel drive configuration for that one, but still taking regular unleaded fuel. Well done, Hyundai, for that. But before we do any kind of acceleration test in this one, I did want to mention there is actually a drive mode knob located just to the left of the shifter. If you turn that to the left or to the right, you will get normal, sport, and smart driving modes, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and actually the steering sensitivity as well. It is a noticeably heavier steering feel when I just put it in the sport driving mode. It's actually also going to adjust the colors a little bit on the smaller digital portion of these gauges as well. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, I'm going to actually leave it in sport driving mode here because what we're now going to do is find a straightaway we're going to do a quick little acceleration test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 Kona here up to speed all right in three two one go <laughs> well it's loud all right, definitely not the quickest thing in the world, but then again, that's what you got the N-Line, the limited trim for, because you got that turbocharged 1.6 liter, but this one, not the quickest thing in the world, but I guess the trade-off is, I can imagine this engine configuration that we have today on our SEL is going to be quite a bit more reliable. Not that it really matters, because you still have an America's Best Warranty, but still, Again, not the quickest thing in the world, but that's okay. But anyways, to go along with this acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 10.3 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's gonna come in at approximately 132 feet, which quite honestly, isn't the best. As far as the braking feel goes, 
that actually isn't bad. I don't mind the braking feel on this one. A lot of Hyundais, or I shouldn't say a lot, but some other Hyundais, I've got kind of a softer braking feel. This one isn't bad, so the braking feel itself isn't bad, but 132 feet from 60 isn't the best. I will say that, but then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, torsion beam rear axle if you go with the front wheel drive, it is going to differ. If you go with the all wheel drive, you're actually going to get an independent multi-link rear suspension, which of course is going to be the better suspension option, not only for a smoother ride, but a little better handling as well. So torsion beam for the front wheel drive, independent multi-link for the all wheel drive. So definitely go with that all wheel drive if not for the all-wheel drive system, at least for the suspension configuration. That's just my personal opinion though. But also, of course, you do get gas pressurized shock absorbers to go along with that. As far as the ride quality goes, it's actually not bad. I mean, it's pretty much as expected. This is a smaller SUV, so it's not gonna be quite as smooth as let's say a Santa Fe or a Palisade, but it's not bad. I will say the ride quality is definitely not bad here in Arcona. As far as steering feel goes, that is, uh, it's not the best. I, I like heavier steering feels. It better helps point you in the direction that you want to go even in this sport driving mode although it is noticeably heavier than the normal driving mode it still could be a little bit better i will say that and if you take it out of that sport driving mode it's really loosey-goosey when it comes to the steering feel so perhaps Hyundai could improve upon that a little bit at least when it comes to this kona here i wouldn't have minded a little heavier weight to the steering gives you a little better feeling of being in control maybe that's my personal preference but Having said that, I've driven a lot of other SUVs at this point, over 500 vehicles, and I will say most other SUVs do have quite a noticeably heavier steering feel when it comes to that. So I just wanted to point that out. As far as cabin noise goes, it's not bad. You do get a little bit of wind noise at higher speeds, but it's not bad. It's certainly manageable in this thing. As far as visibility goes, that is excellent. I can see perfectly fine out the back. Really one of the better ones in its class when it comes to visibility. Not only that, there's actually a head-up display available for the 2022 Kona. So it's going to be an optional thing. That's going to display your speed, speed limit, and some safety features up onto your windshield. Better helping you keep your eyes on the road once again. So that is definitely a huge plus as well. But... That about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior. I actually have a shot as well of the 2021 Coda sitting next to the 2022, which I'll show you guys in a second here. So let's go ahead and find a spot here in the woods and let's take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Kona. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Hyundai Kona. And like I said, a major facelift for the 2022 model year. I'll go ahead and put that picture that I took earlier of those two side by side up on the screen right now. So feel free to pause it for a second if you wanna really compare the two side by side. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one because this is where a lot of the major changes happen for this model year. For example, you do have a new style front grille. The Hyundai logo is now no longer within that front grille. It is moved up top closer to the hood. So that is one of the main key differences, I guess, as far as exterior style goes I actually love the new look of this up front well done Hyundai once again Hyundai really seems to be killing it lately with their design so I absolutely love that front air curtains you guys can see those down to the sides there they're gonna help direct air around the wheel and tire gap combination for a little better aerodynamics also wanted to mention you do have a lot of more body colored accents both on the front and the sides if you were to go at that end line trim level we don't have it today on our SEL but I did want to mention that because it really does completely change the look I'll put Put a picture up on the screen right now of the end line so you guys can see that but definitely quite a substantial different look than what you guys are currently looking at right now so i wanted to mention that but to the sides though projector style headlights do come standard on this one as far as the location because you would think headlights are going to be up top the headlights are actually down below here the led daytime running lights is what's going to be on top of the cone it's just like the previous model year so i did want to mention that though because a lot of people get confused about where the headlights actually are so of course automatic feature also coming standard on this one meaning whenever it starts to get dark at night those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there and another thing you guys may have already noticed there's no fog lights on the 2022 kona whereas they used to be a thing back on the 2021 kona so a little different design there then as well but so then for for anybody wondering about if this thing comes with LED headlights, it does on the end line and limited trim level. So those are the two you're going to have to go with in order to get those brighter LED headlights. And actually, if you were to go with those LED headlights, it is a completely different style design to it 
as well. So I wanted to mention that. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Kona here. All right, you guys, and forgive all the leaves here. I've climbed into the woods to get this side profile right now, but roof rails do come standard on the SEL trim level and up. Therefore, we do have them today. Rear privacy glass also coming standard with the SEL trim level and up. You do get black window surrounds for every single trim level, and they kind of tie in together with that floating roof line towards the back of the Kona here. As far as the side mirrors go, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard standard you will get heated side mirrors if you were to go with the SEL trim level and up and same thing for the integrated turn signals you do have to go with the SEL trim level and up in order to get them but like I said earlier if you go with the end line all of these matte black accents like on the side skirts and the fender wells as well they are going to be body colored with the end line personally I do think it's a much better look although these matte black accents do tie in very well with the black window surrounds and the floating roof line on this one I think I personally would prefer the body colored accents on the end line, but that's just my personal preference. As far as the wheel configurations go, 16 inch alloy wheels for the SE, 17 inch alloys for the SEL, that is currently what you guys are looking at, and then 18 inch alloys for the end line and the limited trim levels in case anybody was curious. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Kona here. And so but now since we are around back, there is a body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear wheel window wiper if you wanted led tail lights simply go with the end line or limited trim levels and of course there will be a rear diffuser if you were to go with that end line trim level otherwise you are going to get the silver accented rear bumper like you were currently looking at here on our sel and just below it all the exhaust finish is actually going to differ amongst the trim levels as well you do have a single exhaust outlet tucked away here for the se sel unlimited however if you were to go with that end line you will find a single exhaust outlet with dual chrome tips so that is a pretty cool look to it, but anyways, either way, I think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the Kona, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate. There is simply a button on the rear lift gate itself. That is how you're going to go ahead and open this one up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 19.2 cubic feet behind that second row. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 45.8 cubic feet. And once in that cargo area, you of course will find some cargo lighting. There is also a cargo cover that comes standard on the Kona as well. There are also some grocery bag hooks. Then if you lift up underneath of the cargo floor, you will find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat, which I personally prefer the spare tire. So that is definitely a good thing. And there's a little bit of room for some in-floor storage right around that spare tire as well. And there's also a little cubby area within the cargo area then as well and that pretty much rounds out the cargo space but let's now go ahead and make our way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 34.6 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there those rear seats by the way do recline which is pretty cool however if you were comparing this to the honda hrv i do like the hrv's magic seats i would have loved to have seen some magic seats here in the back of our kono where you can basically fold up the bottom of those rear seats up to the top so you could fit bigger animals perhaps like a great dane in the back but anyways for those rear passengers you will actually also have a rear center armrest with cup holders so that is also a good thing as well however no rear ventilation for the rear passengers but this is a smaller suv so quite honestly you probably don't need it back there but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the front seats cloth seating coming with the s e s e l and n line trim levels leather seating coming with the limited then eight-way power driver seat for the n line and limited with power lumbar by the way as well then you will also get heated front seats if you were to go with the end line or the limited trim levels and as far as the comfort goes it is perfectly fine there's absolutely no issues with seat comfort here in the Kona I could easily see myself going on a long road trip in this thing so everything is perfectly fine there but then let's take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping if you were to go with the end line or the limited, it will be leather wrapped then as well. Otherwise, if you go with the SE or SEL, you will get a urethane wrapped steering wheel like you are currently looking at right now. 
then make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side, and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and that circular button that says hold, that is actually going to be your remote start, which is pretty cool. That actually comes on the SEL trim level and up. So it is pretty cool that we have it here today. It basically start this one up when it's super cold out and it warms the vehicle up before you actually get inside. So that's always a big plus. However, push button start also comes with that SEL trim level and up. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is to your right, and there is a small digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there, giving you things like your drive modes, of course. There is a digital speedometer if you wanted to display that, your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There are some safety features when you need your next oil change and the list goes on. So basically, everything you could possibly want up on that digital portion of the gauges there. But now let's make our way to overall interior quality. Let me start with power moonroof or power sunroof, I should say, is going to come on the limited trim level only. You will get a black headliner with the end line, gloss black interior accents with the end line, alloy foot pedals with the end line, wireless phone charger coming with the limited. You will get automatic climate control for the limited. The alternative, of course, is what you guys are looking at right now, which is a very easy to use climate control system. It's just not automatic that's also not a big deal for me personally but auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls coming with the limited trim level then and overall it's finished pretty much as you would expect it to there's a decent amount of hard plastics although the color scheme is pretty cool i like the light color with the dark color it definitely looks good in this thing just in front of the shifter you have a 12 volt power outlet and two usb charging ports along with a little bit of storage up there as well just to the right and the left of the shifter you have your drive mode button like i was saying earlier that little lock button that's actually where you can lock it in to the all-wheel drive setting and that is super useful especially here in pennsylvania when it starts snowing out that's what i personally use on my own hyundai santa fe i push that and i have absolutely Absolutely no worries. I remember driving through like a foot of snow last year, like literally a foot of snow in my Santa Fe with that lock button on. It just coasted right through it like it was nothing. It's an amazing all wheel drive system here. I'll say that. Just behind this though, you have dual cup holders and then there is a little bit of storage within that center armrest as well. So overall, interior quality is it's not the best but it'll get the job done in the kona so let's now go ahead and take a look at the tech because a lot has changed for the tech on the new kona here eight inch color touchscreen display now comes standard previously for the 2021 model year it was a seven inch color touchscreen display so it's up an inch from last year i guess you could say so that's pretty cool also there is an optional 10.3 inch color touchscreen display that's available we don't obviously have it today but it is there for you if you wanted it either way bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard now my favorite part wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay also coming standard on this one that is pretty darn cool factory navigation system is going to come with the limited although you don't need it as long as you have a smartphone because of the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay after all climate control settings you could check out up there as well along with your radio information and by the way when it comes to the sound systems on this one six speakers is going to be your standard setup that is going to come with the SE SEL and end line trim levels however if you were to go with the limited, you will get an eight speaker infinity sound system, but we do have that six speaker sound system here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, not that bad of a sound system for six speakers. I've tested tons of six speaker sound systems at this point, and that one actually was not all that bad. So. For six speakers at least, it's not that bad. Of course, there's a ton of sound systems better than that, but not that bad for what it is. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen at least is when you do put this Kona in reverse, let's go ahead and do that. There is a rear view camera that takes up the entire screen, which is pretty cool, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start IIHS top safety pick, that is always the very first thing I like to mention because that pretty much says it all about safety right there, quite honestly. Front side, side current airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard on the Kona for every single trim level. Lane keep assist, forward collision avoidance assist, driver attention warning system, and 
Automatic emergency braking actually as well. I don't believe that one came standard on the 2021 Kona. So that is pretty cool right there. SEL trim level is going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. That's the little car icons in the side mirrors that will flash at you when there's somebody in your blind spot basically so you don't go turning into them. And lane change assist actually for the SEL trim level and up as well. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Kona, this is one of the most reliable vehicles out there on the road right now i remember a comparison i don't remember who did it but basically it gave the top 10 vehicles for reliability it essentially was made up of toyota and lexus and then smack dab towards the top actually was the kona so this literally is one of the most reliable vehicles out there right now and of course it also comes with america's best warranty not that you necessarily need it when you got a super reliable vehicle like this one but also three years free maintenance and i do absolutely love the facelift on the new Kona, really just the front end. I think the front end looks absolutely amazing now. Not that it looked bad before, it actually looked good before too, but now it looks even better in my personal opinion. Also like the end line styling, I will say that we don't have that today, but I like all the body colored accents. That's personally what I would probably go with. I love the upgraded tech, love that the screen is now bigger. That's always a good thing in my book. As far as room for improvement goes, of course, the engine configuration that we have today, it is quite slow. So again, that is what you have the more powerful engine on the end line and limited trims for. And magic seats in the back seat would be pretty darn cool as well. I don't know. I just like the Honda HRV for that particular reason alone, if anything. But again, this is a super solid pick when you factor in everything I just gave you. But let me know what you guys think of the new Kona, of the redesign in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.